What's going on guys? Corey Smith here, CoreFX, bringing you another YouTube educational video here. Um, today's video I wanted to cover succeeding in Forex as a trader, how this can be done. I uh, just want to touch on some of the major points. I know uh, there's a lot of people out there looking to become a profitable trader. There's a lot of things attractive about the Forex markets that, you know, um, have a lot of people out there trying to succeed as a trader. And it is, as you will see, and as you most likely already have seen, an extremely difficult profession to succeed in. Um, it's, it's very easy to be trapped and quickly mesmerized into thinking this is an easy, get-rich-quick industry. And, uh, you know, you can just pick it up, spend a lot of time for a month or two, and boom, you're a successful trader. But uh, as most of you will come to know or already have, it, it is not that case. Uh, I like to think of it like anything else in life that you want to master or as a profession. Um, you know, the 10,000 hour rule it takes 10,000 hours to, to master anything you do. Um, although that's not always the case with always every single thing, each person's different, all, the, all that. But, um, you know, that is something that you can approach this with as well because, you know, it is a profession that is not easy. It is extremely rewarding, but it is extremely hard. It takes a lot of hard work. It takes a lot of proper guidance. And um, really what I want to do is, is kind of help you guys here see what I have found and most all other traders as the number one most important aspects of succeeding in Forex, right? So starting with some of the factors here, um, this is just listing the factors I want to cover in this video. Give you guys a quick little recap overview summary um, of what we're going to be breaking down in this video. So th these are the major factors that attribute to success in trading. Um, and as you'll see, some of them are exactly specifically trading related and some of them are more so lifestyle and, um, you know, personality related. So first and foremost, we've got build your, uh, plan your trade, trade your plan, right? Uh, building a trading plan, having a plan going into trading is the most essential thing you can do. Um, there's a, it's exactly translated into the world of business. Um, being a trader, you're your own business. Businesses fail 80% of the time, small businesses, and this is the number one cause for that is lack of planning. You know, lack of being able to sustain the first year, year and a half without making profits and staying afloat with your overhead. Um, not having a marketing strategy, knowing your market, knowing your competition, all these things come into effect with companies failing to succeed. Trading is no different. Um, you need to have a plan that is black and white, clear cut, that you can follow religiously in and out every single day. This plan needs to be written down, right? It needs to be followed. You need to trade your plan. So when you have a plan, you created it and you've masked and you've, and you've crafted one, then you have to stick to it. You have to have the mental and emotional discipline to stick to your plan. Back test. So to develop a successful plan, you want to make sure you test the strategy that you are going to be using in it. And you want to continue to test your strategy, continue to back test it, see how it works, see how different aspects of it, see what you can tweak and make it better and improve over time. Set smart goals constantly. There's an acronym we'll go over for this, but setting goals that make sense, that keep you motivated, that are um, achievable, that you know make sense that, that uh, are going to get you up and moving and give you clear direction of where you need to go and how you need to get there. Goals are extremely important in every aspect of life and really, really underutilized when it comes to trading. Risk management. This is part of our trading plan, but this is really the number one part of the trading plan that will make or break almost any aspect of success as a trader. Your risk management is going to dictate it day in and day out, hands down, above and beyond anything else by far. And we have journal everything. This is documentation. You know, record everything you do, your trades, your emotions, your education, um, what happened in the markets that day, how you felt about things, how much were you able to trade. Document as much as you can because when you go back and reflect upon your actions and your trading and yourself is when you are able to improve and, and um, see what you're doing right, see what you're doing wrong, see how to make things better. And that is the only way to continue to improve and progress as a trader is while, by documenting things. And also finding the right person to learn from and follow in their footsteps, finding the right mentor to help guide you down the right path, to help show you the ropes, to help develop you into the trader you need to be. Not buying somebody else's system, not buying somebody else's um, 
you know, exact trading plan. You need to develop your own trading plan, but have somebody that can guide you to focus on what is important and narrow that learning curve down and make sure you are really focusing on what you need to be focusing on. So this takes us into our first part of it, and that is going to be plan your trade, trade your plan. So, um, like I said, you, you must, must, must develop a trading plan. I don't care if you've been trading for a week or you've been trading for five years. If you don't have a written trading plan, you are not going to succeed long term. I can promise you that. I can absolutely guarantee your success is inevitably not going to happen if you don't have a written trading plan and know the exact kind of trades you're looking for, the exact kind of setups you're taking, the exact times a day you're trading, everything. Everything must be written down. Now, as you go and as you trade and as you improve, no matter how long you've been trading, your trading plan will most likely evolve. You'll start to learn what does work and doesn't work. This is why journaling is important. This is why back testing is important. You need to be able to keep track of your results and go back and analyze them. And then you can make adjustments. Then you can tweak it. Then you can get better. Then you can improve. So you need to have a set strategy. It doesn't matter if your strategy is buy at 3 p.m. if there's a bearish candle close or if it's 4,000 overlapping indicators. Off the bat, you just need to make one. And then you will continue to improve it as you go and tweak it and realize what you do like, what you don't like, what does work for you, what doesn't work for you, what fits your mentality and your, and your personality and what doesn't. Um, and, and you go from there. But you need to have something to test consistently to see. If you don't have anything, if you're just taking trades that look nice or you're taking support and resistance and like, uh, you know, any different pair, if it sets up and looks like a good trade or you saw Jimmy posted on Instagram or you heard them talking in a chat about it, um, you're never going to, you're never going to find long-term success until you take this serious. And by serious, I mean, you write down your trading plan. I didn't take it serious for the first couple of years trading until I switched over and started prop trading professionally. And then when I started trading somebody else's money, they made me take it serious because I was trading their money and they made me submit a written trading plan. And when I did that, I started to realize how much I lacked in terms of um, being prepared and being ready for what the market was going to throw at me. And that really changed the game for me, writing down my trading plan. And then it has developed and, and evolved since then. But getting something written down started is massively important. It must be detailed. You must be able to give it to somebody else and they would be able to open it up, see it, follow it, know exactly what to do to trade like you. Now, it's not going to work for other people because their mindset and mentality and, and psychology is different. You know, the risk management, the fear, the greed, all that that comes into play is going to be different for everybody that touches anything. But once you develop your plan, it will mold to you in time as you go. If you're journaling, if you're back testing, if you're logging your results and finding ways to improve it. So once you have a plan down, you must follow it. You, you cannot any longer take trades outside of your plan or your results that you're tracking are thrown out of whack. No longer does it represent your trading plan. Now you're throwing in random trades into the mix and you have a data pool of trades that is useless. In statistics, in experimenting, in anything, you need consistent um, environments and variables, you know, controlled variables that you can see what works and what doesn't work. Now in trading, it's the same thing. If you don't have these controlled variables, if you're not consistently doing the same things in and out of every trade, you're going to have inconsistent results and you're never going to be able to see how you perform and what works and what doesn't work and how to improve. So you need to follow your plan with extreme discipline, extreme discipline, follow your plan in and out nonstop. Now this tested, uh, this strategy eventually needs to be tested and, and you know, we need to see that it can be consistently profitable. That's what the next section of this back testing is going to come into play for. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, just having a plan isn't going to make or break you as a trader. I mean, not having a plan will definitely break you as a trader, but having one won't necessarily make you as a trader. So what you then need to do is test and make sure that plan works. And this is probably going to be the longest part of trading and the most frustrating. So with back testing, like I said, you want to just start with a strategy, uh, whether it's one you saw online, one you bought, one you've randomly made up, one you've put together with the stuff you've learned, whatever it may be, have a strategy written down, follow it and have it there in front of you every trading session. Now in my course, I dive into exactly what needs to be in this, this trading plan. Um, I'm sure you can find basic stuff online, but, but you, you really want to make sure it has you know, your exact routine every day, the trading sessions you're trading and how to define a trend, how to define every single little detail of your trading. So um, once you have all that, then you want to back test it and you constantly want to be testing your strategy and trading plan. This goes for 
trading vets and this goes for trading beginners. Um, you really need to constantly be testing your strategy and make sure it is still relevant. Now you can use historical price data to do this. TradingView now has a backlog tool where you can go back in time on the charts and go forward tick by tick to test out strategies, take profit strategies, stop loss strategies, entries, um, whatever it may be. There's also a number of other softwares out there that you can buy and use to back test. Uh, maybe they have a little bit more tools that you like, but there's, there's other softwares like Forex Tester and things like that out there that you can download and buy and use to help back test maybe with quicker results. Um, but back testing is essential to your trading and something you definitely, definitely need to focus your time on. Um, use demo accounts to test strategies. Continue to improve existing strategies. Use a demo account if you want to test out a new strategy. Maybe you have your live account and you have a swing trading strategy you've been using for a while and you want to start testing a scalping strategy. Don't throw off your live account, lose money, and mess up your results. Open a demo account specifically for that strategy. Have five demo accounts if you want. Each one for a different strategy you're testing. Test them all out at, at, at one time. That's the beauty of demo accounts. You can test out exactly how a strategy will perform in the markets without risking money. Now, yes, there's a huge psychological aspect that is going to be different from a live account to a demo account, but still the overall strategy, if you can control your emotions and follow your trading plan, the overall strategy, you can test very nicely with demo accounts and with historical accounts. And if you don't want to use a demo account because you don't like demo accounts, you want money to be online, take a very, very, very small amount of money, money that you could throw out the window right this second and not even think twice about, and trade that to test your strategy. Trade 0.01 micro lots, right? Um, trade the small, small amounts of money that, that you can still test and see how the trading strategy does without risking your money, without risking your hard-earned cash. And without money, you can't make money in this business, so you need to preserve your capital as much as possible. So, right, so um, you have to have your plan and you have to back test it. The next thing we really need to make sure we're doing constantly is setting goals. Um, goals are something that is, is really, really crucial in everything in life. Without goals, you know, like, like everyone says, the dreams are useless without goals, right? Without a plan on how to reach them. So um, if becoming a successful trader is something you want to do, like I, assure, I, I assume you guys do if you're watching this, you're going to want to set goals to do this. Now, these goals, I think, should be long-term goals that you set out 10 years down the road five years down the road three years down the road a year down the road six months down the road and small-term goals i want you to have goals for the day goals for the week goals for the month they can range from um you know growing a trading account size to uh how much pips you want to make a day to how much percentage of your account you want to make a day a week a month all the way down to how many pages of the next trading book you're on do you want to be able to read a day how many um hours are you going to spend a day on the charts how many you know, um, trades are going to take a week. Goals have a number of layers to them. Personal life goals, financial goals, things goals. There's all kinds of goals, but you want to make sure that you have and constantly are setting and documenting them. You want to make your goals and then go back and see if you achieve them. Or maybe in the middle of the week, you forgot about half the goals you made on Monday. And now you can realize for the next week moving forward, don't forget about your damn goals. Keep them in front of you and keep achieving them. Uh, another thing to throw into your goals that I would add is watch a motivational YouTube video every morning when you wake up. It'll light a fire under your ass that'll change the day over and over and over again. Um, so just throw goals in there. Throw a plan on how you are going to become what you want to become in life. And trading is no different than that. You need goals. You need clear, cut, and achievable goals. Now we use the acronym SMART when it comes to setting goals. This is set goals that are specific, measurable, achievable, results focused time bound. So we want them to be specific. That means we want them to be clear. We want to know what it is. We want 200 pips a month. Specific, clear. You know what that is. You know if you got it, you know if you didn't get it. I want to have a million dollar net worth in two years. It's clear. You know that there's a value on it. You can see it. You can wake up and look at it every day and look at where you're at compared to it. Look at where you're going. Um, you can really, really see what is going on, how you're going to get there, and, and your results that you want to achieve are clear and specific so like similar to specific we want them to be measurable if you want to make you know a goal for growing your account each month how much what's the number right what amount do you want it to grow by how are you going to be able to track it if you don't set a measurable amount to be able to keep track of your progress and see where you're at right you want it to be um specific an exact number but then you want it to be something you can measure 
right? You want it to be something that you can keep track of and track your progress and see how you do. So you want your goals to be achievable. I want your goals to scare you. I want your goals to be something that other people in your life look at and think, what the hell? How is he going to get there? I want you to be a little confused at, and, and unsure at first, your longer term goals specifically of how you're going to get there. But they need to be realistic, right? They need to be achievable. They can't be something that you physically can't do. It should be something that you have to seriously push and test yourself to achieve, but it needs to be something that you can actually achieve. So it must be an achievable result, specific, measurable, achievable. So this, the, the next one is results focused or relevant. Um, for one, you want it to be something that drives you, that motivates you, that gets you up and moving, that eliminates that procrastination, that gets you going. Um, and if it is not results motivated, results, results focused or relevant to your, uh, obvious where you want to be, um, it's not going to get you to, to achieve them. You're not going to have the drive and the desire to go after these goals. So you want to make sure they're results focused. So when you hit them, you have that sense of achievement. You understand that you busted your ass to get that and it was measurable. It was specific. It was achievable and you achieved a result at the end of it. So you want to make sure there is a reason for doing it. There is a, um, you know, ending, um, spot you want to be that makes it relevant to you and makes it something that you want to drive and thrive to get. Because if it doesn't make sense, if it's not in line with where you want to be, who you want to be, the life you want to have, it doesn't, it's not going to get you going after. It's, it's going to be like the job that you're miserable going to, that you perform half ass all day because you don't want to be there. You want it to be what you want to achieve and make you strive to get it so that when you achieve those results, you see that next step towards who you want to be that you just got to. And lastly, for goals, you want them to be time bound. You want to have a timeline set out for them. This is for mainly to get you moving to make you feel a sense of urgency and to get you to really want to get that get up out of bed at six o'clock when the alarm's going off and you want to hit snooze seven times in a row it's going to make you get up off the couch and go run that couple miles that you've been wanting to do but you're not letting yourself so when you set these time bound limits when you set okay i need to read 10 pages of this book by the end of the day and you do that every day and every day you look at that goal and you're like oh i gotta get these 10 pages done before the end of the day and you read them next thing you know it's the end of the month and you read the entire book that you wanted to read and you didn't even realize it because all those little goals you set every day with a time limit you achieve them because you didn't want to let yourself down and not achieve those goals and the next thing you know your longer term goal of reading a book a month got a achieved just by setting a daily small goal like that that took you 10 minutes a day right so we want it time bound we want them to be specific measurable achievable results focused and time bound and i promise you if you incorporate this into your trading it's your trading plan it will make you so much more successful in the learning and the knowledge receiving side of it to begin with and then also into the actual trading as well so risk management is part of your trading plan and it is the most important part of your trading plan there's a number of important parts of your trading plan but this is what will hands down make or break traders day in day out um over and over and over again so um First, and first of all, the number one most important part of any trading plan is your risk management. There's another a number of layers to that. I have videos on risk management. Go into my uh, YouTube videos here and you'll be able to see a number of other videos and some of them pertain to risk management. But um, risk per trade is one of these big ones. So in terms of just overall capital you have in your account, you want to risk a certain percentage of a capital each trade. So I would recommend that percentage is 1% to 3%, no higher than 5 ever. Um, so what that means is every single trade you open, your stop loss is at a point where you risk X percentage of your account. You don't want to risk more than, let's say 2% on your account. Your stop loss is at a point where if it got hit 2% of your trading account would be gone. So this, like everything else we're doing, allows us to have consistent and measurable, uh, achievements. It allows us to track our progress and see how we're doing. It also allows us to sustain an account and not blow an account. We're not risking 20% a trade. We go on a five uh, trade drawdown, we blow our account. We go into such a high drawdown, we can't make our, our profits back and we never get back to break even. Um, these, are, these are the things that we want to avoid and these are the things that are going to help us get there. Our risk per trade needs to be there in every single trade we ever make. Our risk to reward ratio. You could have a less than... 50-50 winning strategy. You could win four out of 10 trades and with the right risk to reward ratio, make a ton of money, right? You can win eight out of 10 trades and with the wrong risk to reward ratio, lose a ton of money. 
So risk to reward is going to be massive. If you just picked a strategy and you didn't book any profits until it was at a two to one risk to reward, you use the same risk per trade, every trade, and you only got out of trades at a regular one to one risk to reward, right? And you, you're all your, all your wins were two to one risk to reward. Chances are, if you stayed disciplined to that and you did that over and over and over, you would be well ahead of the curve right off the bat, just from enforcing your risk management rules. And I can promise you, you take any strategy you've been using right now, if you haven't been using risk management properly, you enforce the proper risk management. And I can assure you, your results will jump massively just by following proper risk reward ratios and risk per trade and risk management. You want open portfolio risk management, right? So let's say you're risking 2% per trade. You don't want to have 15 trades open at a time. You want to have two or three trades open at a time, right? You want to have an overall risk that you are willing to have on the table at any time when you're in trades. You want your drawdowns to be there. You want to know if I lose X amount of dollars today, I'm done for the day. If I lose X amount of dollars this week, I'm done for the week. Something's wrong. I'm not right mentally. Uh, the markets aren't agreeing with my plan, whatever it may be. If I lose X amount in a month, I'm done for the month. Spend the rest of the month learning, back testing, going back over your strategy, going back over your journal. Plenty of things you can do with your time other than continue to lose money. So, um, we want to know what our drawdown amounts are, what our mercy rules are, right? So risk management is extremely important, and it's a topic I pl please, guys, focus a lot of time on. A lot of time, this is going to be what makes or breaks you as a trader. Another massively important aspect, journaling. Every trade you ever make needs to be journaled, ever, especially when you're following a strategy, right? So we want to follow a strategy so we have consistent results that we can analyze and track and follow and improve on. Now, how do we do this? With a journal. We journal every trade we make and we visually and verbally write down why we took the trade, what setup occurred, all that. And then we track what happened in the middle of the trade. We track what happened after the trade so that we know what our results were. You know, we know what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, what is working, what isn't working, all of that. We want to journal our emotions before, after, and during trades. This will help us really get on track with um, the psychological side of trading. You know, maybe you realize, oh man, every time I open a trade, it's going to hit my take profit. I close it early and it ends up actually going to my take profit. And, you know, I'm getting greedy or scared that it's going to turn against me and I'm missing out on a lot more profits I could be taking. Or maybe every time I enter a trade starts going against me, instead of letting my stop loss play out, I just take a small loss and close out because I'm scared. When really my trade never would have hit my stop and would have been a winner. I would have won three more out of the last 10 trades and I would have been profitable. Um, you're going to start to notice all these things that you haven't noticed before when you start journaling. And journaling your emotions before, after, and during trades is a huge part of that. You want to journal your notes throughout a trading session, right? So if you notice at different times a day, price slows down a lot. If different times a day, price moves a lot. Um, the spreads jump at certain times. Things like this, you want to start noticing. And these are things that you'll learn as you've traded longer. But taking notes will let you really start to notice that and really start to improve. Journal news events and price reacting to them. You know, sit behind your computer when NFP jobs report comes out. See what the spreads do. See what price does. See what the um, what pairs react to it. You know, see what the dollar does. See what the Aussie does. See what the CAD does. Just start taking notes and being aware of things and paying attention. You'll start to realize so much about how the market moves and how things work. Um, journal and document as much as you possibly can. Looking back and analyzing your thoughts and actions are how you improve as a trader. So we want to constantly be reflecting on ourselves, constantly be looking back at our actions and journaling and documenting is how we have actions to look back on and analyze and see how we are doing. All right. And lastly, but not least, find somebody to learn from who knows what they're doing and can really help you as a trader stay focused. So, you know, learning from the right person is pretty essential um, to not only increasing your learning curve, making you learn faster, succeed faster, but also to you know make sure you're focusing on the right things, to make sure you have all the right tools to success lined up in front of you. Um, how do you find a successful uh, mentor? Find someone who has found consistent success, somebody who trades professionally somebody who you know is the real deal they're not just a, an instagram account or um a ponzi get rich quick scheme you know they're not just a good marketer they market their product all over the place and they get tons of people to sign up for it and then they get inside and realize it's crap their professional trading experience is another thing to look for you know somebody who was in the trading pits who was worked on a trading floor who's traded for a company who manages funds um and and you know make sure they're able to show you that this is real not just that they say it 
and they say they manage a $5 million trading account. Anybody can say that. Who knows that's real? How do you know that's real? Um, there's reviews from others who have learned from them. So if they have a course, like, like we do here at CoreFX, see if they have reviews. You know, See if there's other people you can talk to and they are able to share with you what their experience was. That they are able to um, portray with you that they found value out of it. That they've taken other courses and they see what this does. That they were able to improve their trading. That they improved as a trader from doing this. Right? It's easy to tell if you're learning from the right person or not. Um, especially once you talk to somebody who already has. Their material covers important aspects of trading. So it's not just going to be, oh, I'll show you support and resistance, technical analysis, and, you, and my exact strategy, and you'll be able to take over the world and make billions with it. Um, that's not the case, ever. And that's not the truth. Find somebody who teaches what's really important. Risk management, trading psychology, journaling, backtesting, developing a trading plan, having the proper trading plan, trading at the right times of day. All of these things that are what actual proven successful traders do, what actual trading companies do, what actual investment companies do. Make sure somebody's teaching you the right things, right? It's, it's, not, it's not one of those get rich quick schemes that's like take my course, uh, watch these 10 hours of videos and you'll be a millionaire for the rest of your life and everyone after you and your family is going to be rich for the rest of their days. Um, be very skeptical of these because unfortunately there was a lot of marketing scams in this industry. So just, just talk to people, you know, Find somebody who's been down the road you're trying to go down and find somebody who's, who's you know, been a part of their course maybe or who's learned from them and, and really just see that they are the real deal and, and get some, some feedback before you go and invest in yourself and be the wrong investment. But I do highly recommend you invest in yourself. There are a lot of tools out there that are free that are very beneficial, but there is a lot of things out there that if you... Um, find the right course and person to learn from can really be game changing. So if you are interested in core effects, check out the website. Um, I've got all kinds of results I share with my students. We've got a signals room that's made 1150 pips in August. We're up 900 pips in September. Those are those are real live actual results. Um, we've got reviews on trustpilot.com, which is verified reviews only. You can Google core effects reviews and you'll see we've got real reviews on there from real students. Uh, there's testimonials on the website. You can see the full course outline to the site, so you can see exactly what's covered in the course, and you can see that it is the relevant, important topics, right? Um, it's not a marketing company. This is a content-based company. We don't, I don't market all over the place. Um, I just create content, and uh, I just wanted to, you know, run through these topics with you guys here. I hope you guys did get some information out of this. I hope this was something you found relevant. I share with you what I've learned from professional trading companies. What are the most important? factors that lead to success. Now, there's no success guaranteed for anyone at anything in life, but um, if you want to increase your chances of success and increase the chance of you being able to make it in this field, you must, must, must follow the outlines I laid out here in this, and you must adhere to them. If you don't, I can promise you, you will blow money, you will rip out your hair, and you will not have a very fun time in this world. So um, make sure you focus on the proper things Stay determined. Don't give up. That is another extremely, extremely important aspect of being successful in Forex. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. You're going to get discouraged. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to get mad. You're going to get angry. You're going to want to quit. You're going to break your keyboard. Stay focused. Revert back to what's important. Keep yourself calm and do not give up. I promise you it is very well worth it at the end of the day. And there is a lot, a lot, a lot of lucrative money to be made, and life changes to be made succeeding in this industry. All right, guys, thank you very much. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to check out corefxtrading.com. Check out all the different courses that we offer. We also offer a monthly signal room. As I told you guys, 1,150 pips in August, 800 to 900 pips. We're already up here in September. So make sure you guys check us out, see what you like, see what you think, and shoot your uh, questions on over to me. Any questions you have, throw a comment below or shoot me an email, and I'm ready for any questions you guys got. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it, and I'll catch you guys later.